Welcome to Eclipse Season. My name is Luke from Astro Awakening, and you are on my YouTube channel, which has just reached a massive, momentous milestone for me, being that it's about four years in the making, but I've just ticked over 1,000 subscribers to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for commenting, liking, sharing, just joining in the, the journey. Um, and it's been a journey. So we're just at the beginning. We're at the tip of the iceberg. We're bringing this stuff mainstream. We're starting to integrate all of this uh, understanding and knowledge into real life action, how we show up in our lives, how we walk in this world, how we be in this body. <laughs> So this video is going to be all about the lunar eclipse. We've just entered into eclipse season pretty much. And this coming Monday, and depending on where you are around the world, whether it's Sunday, Monday, um, we have a lunar eclipse. And then a couple of weeks after that, we're going to have the solar eclipse that's on everyone's mind. Um, the total solar eclipse that's running across the USA. So eclipses, uh, uh, not all eclipses are the same. And uh, in this video, I'm going to hopefully, hopefully, break down the energetics of the eclipse and the understanding of it and look at it symbolically from a few different points of view to help really give you the right tools um, and awareness around how you might be personally navigating. And I'll stress at the very beginning, like I did at the last video, that if you want really, you know, accurate, specific guidance for you and, you know, the likelihood of the types of experience you may encounter through these energetic and cosmic alignments, then book in for a birth chart reading. Um, you know, no two eclipses are the same, no two people are the same, no two birth charts are the same. And how these cosmic alignments interact with us is going to be very dependent on the specifics of your birth chart. But again, I just put that at the very beginning so that you can come at this and the knowledge and information that I present from a very sort of um, objective perspective, big picture, you know. So hopefully it strikes a chord. And if it does, and you find this video in some way helpful, then hit the like, make sure you subscribe and definitely get it out to your friends, family. Uh, you know, maybe it's your red pill moment. You can drop a few little, hey, check out this weirdo on the internet I found. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But seriously, thousand subscribers, hell to the year. So let's look at it. So we have a lunar eclipse. What's happening on an eclipse? Well, a lunar eclipse, supposedly the Earth is casting a shadow on the moon. So a lunar eclipse happens when there is a full moon. And you can see this chart here. Uh, let me get my magic pen. <laughs> let me get my magic pen. The sun is at five degrees of Aries and the moon is at five degrees of Libra. Those signs are opposite each other. Therefore, the sun is fully illuminating the moon uh, they're at their opposition. Sun and moon in opposition, we always have a full moon. When there is a full moon in conjunction to one of these little guys, the horseshoe travelers through the zodiac, okay, they are the lunar nodes. And this one being that it's horseshoe shaped with the opening upwards, it's a container and it holds things. And it holds things from the past. So it's always shaped like that representing the past, the south, the south node. If we look to the north node here, it's the other way, and it's almost like it's pointing up, pointing to the direction we call that the north lunar node. So with a lunar eclipse, we've got a full moon. When the full moon occurs within 12 degrees either side of either of those nodes, we'll have some type of lunar eclipse. The closer it is to the node, the more powerful or potent the eclipse is. This eclipse is uh, within 10 degrees. So it's just within the orb of influence for an eclipse to occur, but it's uh, it's enough for us to, to have an eclipse. And, um, you know, this is the physicality of it, the astronomical aspect of it. We're looking mostly at the energetic uh, influence or at least correlation of it. Um, for there to be a solar eclipse, that's a new moon. So one's coming up shortly on the 9th or 8th of April, depending on where you are. And um, that is a new moon, again, in conjunction, right, to the north or the south node within 18 degrees either side. And then obviously the closer it is to the node, um, the more potent it is, or it becomes what's known as a, a total solar eclipse. So the one coming up, and again, there's another video all about the solar eclipse. Um, 
that one is within four degrees of the nose. So it's a total solar eclipse. This one, the orb's a little bit further apart. So we still have an eclipse, but it's not as necessarily as potent. So there's archetype of Aries and Libra, except it's a south node eclipse. Okay, so full moons are about release and revelation, culminations, things coming to light, to a peak, to their full expression. Okay, so... On this lunation, there is something reaching a pinnacle point in conjunction with the south node. It can somehow reference something from the past. Um, and we'll talk about what that might be because there's lots of different ways to sort of think about it. The theme of uh, Libra is going to be entwined or connected to this experience. Um, and then the south node always calls us to you know, perhaps remove, release, to let go of something. Perhaps sometimes it's just something within us we're overcoming or letting go, a habit, behavior, thought process, um, you know, and other times it can be something literal, like it's like I'm letting go of a job or a moving house or a moving country or I'm ending a relationship and those types of things. So we'll talk more about the themes of those. Um this eclipse is the culminating point of the solar eclipse that we had on the south node in October last year. And then the eclipses, they happen uh, six months apart, but the uh, cycle of eclipses happen over this sort of 18-year period. And we get these sets of eclipses that happen in sort of cycles every 18 years. And then those eclipses are a part of a family of eclipses. And those families of eclipses can span over about 1,200, 1,250 years. So since the beginning of the first one within a family of eclipses, every 18 years, you know, until you get to about 1,200 years, there tends to be often around 72 eclipses within a set or a family. And they are known as what's called the Saros series, Saros series of eclipses. And uh, each set of eclipses has its own series that it's a part of so again you can look into the series and find what was the first eclipse in that series of family eclipses and then you can look at the energetics of that and the theme that was represented at that time even if it is six seven eight hundred twelve hundred years ago is going to somehow symbolically play out um where they are within your birth chart they're going to fall across an axis of your house and how to get a We'll start the process of becoming more personalized with, you know, this uh, sort of transits and stuff that we're having going on for all of us collectively in the cosmic clock is to start looking at the house in which the eclipse are going to fall over. Um, so you want to look to your Libra house, your Aries house, and it's going to give you a bit of an idea. Um, in this case, if this was your chart, um, it's set up to sort of show you that this would be Virgo rising and then Libra would in, uh, be intercepted or at least begin within that first house. So you might have to look in your chart and it could mean that you've got Libra in sort of influencing two aspects of um, different charts. What you want to find is where the eclipse is in relation to the specific house based on where it's going to fall. If this was your chart, the second house cusp is at 27 degrees and the eclipse is happening at five degrees with the nodes at 15. So it's definitely on this side of that cusp. So this would be read as a first house eclipse. So again, don't want to get too much into that, but you want to sort of look to your Libra Aries house. And again, this is a Placidus house system. So you might be using a house system, which is uh, equal sign, whole sign, um, you know, different types of house systems going to be different, differently um, looked at. Um, so Another uh, indicator that I want to sort of bring in here in context to understanding this eclipse is the degree of the eclipse. Um, you know, so where the exact uh, full moon is going to occur is in five degrees of Aries, five degrees of Libra. And because it's a full moon, I'm going to really pay attention to um, the, lo the lunar part of this, the moon part of this. So the fifth degree of Libra is associated to the sixth Sabian symbol of Libra. Okay. So when we have a look at the sixth Sabian symbol of Libra, um, I can read you a little bit here from uh, James Burgess' site, um, who sort of models his ideals and way he sees the symbols, the Sabian symbols on uh, Dane Rodia's symbols. Um, I just like the way uh, James sort of breaks things down. I like his wording around it. So the sixth symbol, sixth Sabian symbol of Libra, every degree of the zodiac 
has a symbol associated to it called a Sabian symbol, um, is the ideals of a man abundantly crystallized. So this is what James Burgess says about the sixth Sabian symbol of Libra, which coincides with the fifth degree. Visualization. We tend to get whatever we imagine. So let us not imagine, uh, so let us not imagine what we don't want to attract. Very interesting. We tend to get whatever we imagine. So let us not imagine what we don't want to attract. The power of visualization for better or worse. To the normal person, life is to be observed and accommodated or suffered. Yet an awakened person has a clear sense that it is we ourselves who create the outer circumstances of our life, even to the last detail. It is the mind that creates. A strong, subtle, and clear mind can both interpret the signals of the soul and resist the distractions of the body, holding focus upon the visualizations of that course which faith and optimism suggest. In other words, the ideal you, who are you becoming, this idealistic you, this idealistic life, this sort of accomplishment, this way of being, this life you're creating, and how do we create that through the act of seeing it in our inner eye, our inner vision? And, you know, knowing that, who are we creating? How are we creating? We tend to get whatever we imagine, so let us not imagine what we don't want to attract. My mentor, uh, you know, one of my mentors, she would always say um, the, when we are living not in alignment with our desires, we're getting undesirable scenarios and situations. We tend to have had a misuse of our imagination. It's run rampant. We haven't been consciously in control of it. Next thing we've created a freaking nightmare for ourselves because we can't let go of the worry, the depression, the anxiety, the stress, the concern, the, uh, you know, the fear. So we've got to be very mindful of what we're imagining. And as what I've found in my personal life too, is as you move along your journey of awakening, this power becomes more potent and it, therein lies the paradox is it's like you have to even be more prepared and consciously, you know, alert and aware because you start to really see life show up through what you've been focusing on, what you've been creating, visualizing, imagining. And, um, you know, that's that's fantastic, but also it's sort of like, well, you, you wanted this power to create like a god. <laughs> be careful, right? Pay attention. Um, be conscious. Uh, be creating consciously instead of unconsciously. Uh, otherwise, you, you might not like what you see. So how does this fit into this South Node Lunar Eclipse? Uh, well, you see, the South Node Lunar Eclipse in Libra is bringing to light the ending of a relationship of you and something or someone else. And whatever that relationship is, is most likely needing to be released or let go so that you can freely create from your ideal, your imagined life. So I'll give you a really personal, um, you know, anecdote to how this is playing out for me. The relationship for me that is coming to the end of its cycle for me, it's end of its usefulness. I'm letting it go. I'm saying goodbye. I am making a line in the sand is my relationship to alcohol. Um, I got on this morning on the YouTube and tried to do a live in the car and it worked, but it never saved. So if you've watched that live, this is going to be quite repetitive. But um, if you didn't because it didn't get saved, well, here you go. My, my journey of awakening began with a year off alcohol. And uh, since then, I've had a, another year off alcohol at a different time. And it's been the two most profound periods of my life where I got physically in shape, very clear, clear consciously clear, in intellect really clear, rationale and reason very clear, in alignment, really in alignment. And, you know, at the initial phase of the, the year off, you sort of struggle a bit with coming to terms with an aspect of life and lifestyle that's sort of not going to be there anymore. And you have to make some adjustments. But at the end of the time of the year of alcohol, uh, you've got so much clarity in this realization that you can live without it and you can enjoy life without it. In actual fact, you could probably have more life without it. 
And that's happened for me twice, yet I have somehow wandered back to, you know, having a beer, loving a drink, catching up with friends, having a wine and dinner and those types of things. Not misusing it like I would have before my awakening process, but certainly still having it there and also utilizing it sometimes in the wrong way. Um, and what I've come to this realization, and it's really been pertinent since about October last year, when these sort of feelings and thoughts really started to enter into my consciousness around the, the solar eclipse was that I, I'm, I'm the best version of myself without it. And I really am here now to sort of step more into my mission on purpose and empower myself to create a life that I've always known was possible. That is the birthright of each individual here, freedom. And I need to be at my best. I need to be the best version of myself in order for that to happen. So my relationship, my Libra, right, relationship to alcohol is, is coming to its end. I am letting it go. This is a karmic ending and a karmic undoing. You see, I have the south node in Pisces in my fourth house. So... You know, the, the battle with the bottle is probably been something that I have brought with me from other lifetimes. And I've probably wasted myself in it, distracted myself, escaped myself, stayed within my poor victimized mentality and helplessness within it or utilized it as a crutch. And uh, it's not serving me uh, consciously. And it's not serving me in my life and my journey. And I realize that now. Where is the liberal full moon occurring? Well, it's on the polarity of my fifth and 11th house, the me-we axis, I call that. Well, the fifth house in particular is, uh, you know, risk-taking and gambling and debauchery almost to a degree. So it's like that aspect that is associated to alcohol uh, is come to an end. Um, another mentor of mine, he said that uh, when he gave up about three years ago, he said to me, None of my good decisions have happened when I've been drunk. All of my regrets, all of my bad decisions have happened when I've been drunk. <laughs> and I thought about that and I sort of thought of applied that to my own life and went, yeah, I could probably say the same. <laughs> and also having had experienced a year off uh, the booze, then I know what it's like to live without it. It's much better. Life's way better. It's just getting getting to that point. Now, if you're out there and you don't drink or you've quit long ago or you're on your journey, and well, congratulations. I mean, you get it, right? But for those of you that are sort of like, uh, oh my God, this is striking a chord, or maybe it's confronting for you, it's triggering. This is by no means saying that in order to be spiritual, you shouldn't drink. I know a lot of spiritual mentors and people that I sort of look up to that have achieved phenomenal success and are very, very like, you know, powerful spiritual people and they drink. Not They don't drink to get drunk. They don't drink like overtly, but they all have a drink. In fact, one of them, which is uh, Maynard um, Keenan James, he's the lead singer of Tool, Perfect Circle and Pussifer and he actually owns a, a vineyard and a winery. So I've seen him on podcasts having a beer. Um, cool. You know, he's, he's able to, you know, be the person he is and be, be the best version of himself, which it clearly looks like that's the case and also be able to to you know experience and live with it that's that's fantastic for me the reality is i'm better off without it so that is the relationship aspect of this libra lunar eclipse south node is what relationship to a part of yourself or your life is preventing you from stepping into the ideal you, right? Or it's somehow dampening the imagination or distracting you, or it's the egoic sort of um, rationale and reasoning as to why you can't have or be or do what you came here to have, be and do, um, because there's this negative quality, this part that's not, you know, you, you're stuck on, you're, let, you're having difficulty overcoming or letting go. This lunar eclipse is the bon voyage moment. <laughs> you could look at it as like time to really, you know, do the work. Um, and why this is really a potent eclipse in order for the, that type of thing to be letting go is because 
in another two weeks, we have a North Node Aries eclipse. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Aries is the pioneer. Aries is about action. Aries is about impulse and action and doing and being and having the courage and the brave heart to, to jump, right? So, you know, that is an opportunity for a bold, brave, brand new beginning. And, you know, as I said in my last video with that um, ingress chart, as we moved into this start of this astrological year with Mars being in Aquarius for that, like acting from the ideal, acting from the future self, you know, sit and think about yourself living in your wildest dream life. And then, you know, look back to where you are now and go, okay, what does this guy need to do in order for me to become that, to do that? Who do I need to be? And then look into your life and say, what relationship do I have to either something now or something from the past that is not serving me? You know, it's not allowing it. Now, if that happens to be a relationship with someone else or something else like your work or your job, or your partner, or your friend, or someone toxic within your family, then it might be a serious sort of confrontation with that, where you have to have that deep realization and come into sort of clarity to go, right, this has to happen. Will it happen on the eclipse on Monday, or around the eclipse, or in the aftermath of it? Well, it's more about coming to the, you know, um, commitment to a decision or a new path. And you could sort of say, right, I have got this opportunity coming up with the solar eclipse. This karmic knot is being um, released and I can bravely, boldly step into a new me, a new future. So, you know, taking a serious sort of look at the self, a long, hard look in the mirror and thinking, all right, well, let's be serious. What do I got to let go of? You know, um, what's holding me back? What's... Um, you know, another way to think of this through the lens of Libra is that we want peace. We want harmony. We want balance in our life. What part of ourself or our life from the past is tipping those scales and causing us to be off center? And how do we find peace with the past? How do we find that inner peace with the past? letting it go <laughs> for some that's hard because in order to let it go we have to allow ourselves to feel what we've probably been avoiding so lunar eclipse hello full moon call that forth bring that to the surface allow the moon to illuminate that aspect of the subconscious really become conscious of that bring it from that repressed state the unconscious the rejected you know, and, and allow it to move through you. It can be pretty potent and wild. In fact, I would think that this lunar eclipse on Monday, you might see some pretty strange and wild and uncharacteristic behavior as you look into the world and around it in your life. Um, okay, just take a step back and allow the process to unfold. People tend to go a little crazy on full moons and lunar eclipses are going to be no... Uh, exception to that rule especially the dynamic with Aries as well and you know that Aries quality is really firing things up now the other thing that's interesting about this eclipse is that uh, both the moon and the sun are in signs of Venus and Mars so moon is in Libra that's Venus the sun is in Aries that's Mars and both Venus and Mars happen to be in Pisces and um for the next one, let me just change that. Let me double check this. One, two. Yeah. For the next eclipse, the solar, that won't be the case. Venus will also be in Aries as well. So anyway, let's deal with where we're at right now. Um, you know, there's the spiritual sort of aspect to this. And uh, with Pisces, there's this disillusionment or the dissolving of what's real. We're in the final sign of the Zodiac, both Mars and Venus straddling Saturn there, you know, and the serious karmic ending on doing and releasing. You know, we've got to have compassion to ourselves, 
um, we've got to forgive ourselves as well. Uh, I know for me, when I look at my life in terms of alcohol, and I, like I've not necessarily been an alcoholic or done stupid things drunk, absolutely, and I've probably used it in the wrong uh, context a lot of the time. But I'm in no means like a, a problem drinker or, you know, one of those really alcoholic types, you know, and if that's you and you need guidance and support, I strongly suggest you reach out and get it. But, um, but you know, I guess I'm forgiving the part of myself which have I have not allowed to express freely or has kept me playing small or insecure or the victim that um, I've used alcohol as a way to sort of um, escape or avoid that confrontation with that part of me. So, you know, there's that that forgiveness of myself in context to the Libra full moon relationships, the past, finding peace with the past. It's It may be calling some superhuman strength to do some really hard forgiving. Um, when we think about, uh, you know, if, if a stranger in the street has said something hurtful you or done something accidentally or even intentionally harmed you, um, you know, sometimes it's like, well, I don't know why that happened or how that happened or, you know, like it, let's say they've tripped you up on the path or you've been at the pub piss and they've had a fight, but you've not known this person. You could sort of get to a point where you could go, ah, my part to play, probably in the wrong place at the wrong time probably didn't mean it. Maybe he was drinking, maybe whatever, right? You can find it in you to sort of go, okay, I'll just move on, let go. When we're hurt by people close to us, when we're hurt by blood, when we're hurt by people that we put our trust in, ooh, it's hard work to, to really let that go and forgive them, especially if that person has been possessed by a dysfunctional archetype that has overtaken their personality and their consciousness. And now it's all you see when you look at them and, they never disappoint you because they show up as that person all the time, the villain, the narcissist, um, the victim, you know, the uh, the martyr, all of those types of energies. So what I would suggest if there's work to do there to really process and let go and you're getting to that point where really, oh, fuck, I, really, I don't think I could ever forgive them. <laughs> um, try to connect to the part of the innocent part of them. Um, and this has come up a few times recently in my sessions is that um, I've asked people, you know, that have been hurt by other people or their actions, you know, whether it's been uh, abuse uh, or trauma and things like that. I say, like, was this person born that way? And mostly the answer is no. Right. The innocent baby coming into this life wasn't behaving that way, weren't born this way. Perhaps they carried a, an imprint on their soul of this type of ch challenging or difficult experience. And then they had circumstances within this life at a young age trigger that pattern which brought it into re reality meant that that person became it at a young age or was impacted by something that turned that aspect of them on at a young age as a means for survival um you know a lot of the dysfunctional patterns and behaviors that we have are basically keeping us alive or what we think we need to do will be to be alive um but you could understand that there is the essence of the person that was uncompromised and not conditioned or triggered, that that part of the person is what you're forgiving. Not necessarily the negative possession or obsession or the dysfunctional qualities or behavior or you know identity that they become, but the innocent aspect. You know, and then a lot of other people have issues with forgiveness in the sense that it is uh, inviting them back into my life or dismissing what happened and excusing what happened. And that's not the case either. And this process isn't for them. It's for you. It's for you to be able to let go. To forgive something is to let it go, completely let it go. If there's something from the past that's you're holding, you're holding it. Okay, even if someone else did it, you're holding it. When you hold on to the hurt or the resentment from, from for that, you're holding it again. And when we think about what we're holding, right, in relation to something that's no longer happening, in other words, it's happened, it happened years ago or it happened last week or it happened when I was 10, right? It's from the past now and it's creating this 
you know, this tilt and this lean towards whatever that is, and I can't seem to let it go. So forgiveness is the ability to say, I'm done with that. I've moved on. I've let go. I'm transcending. And when we do, we create this inner peace now. You know, we can't change one thing about what happened, but we can change the way we look at it. And the best we could hope for is finding some peace now. Maybe the memory is traumatic and the experience was challenging or difficult. And whenever I go back, it's there and it's hard. Fair enough. Well, how do I then find now my peace? Where do I find my peace? Can I find my peace? And I'll tell you now, based on the work I do and, you know, things that I've experienced in my own life, we have superhuman capability of being ultra idealistic, <laughs> Mother Teresa, next level savant, like enlightenment, like, you know, level forgiveness. <laughs> um, I leave that sort of idea and concept with you in relation to this lunar eclipse this release of energy, this something that's coming to light, this revelation, this culmination, this pinnacle moment of I'm done, it's in the past, my relationship to it now is ending and I'm karmically letting that go. Um, you know, that is the test with Saturn in Pisces and when we pass the test, we actually can really spiritually mature. Um, and it's part of the, the journey, the spiritual journey. Um, this is the perfect time as we move through this first lunar eclipse and then into the solar eclipse. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll do another breakdown video on the solar eclipse. Um, that's about it for this eclipse in relation to the energetics that I see and the perspective that I have in relation to that. Uh, if again, you'd like personal guidance or support on your own journey and you need to, you know, you've got some difficult things you're going through or hard things you have to let go of, um, then maybe consider just connecting and we can go through your chart and we can have a look at it. And, um, you know, that the thing that I can help with is to reframe scenarios or to let you look at it from a perspective that you probably haven't before. And the chart can help us look at it from all different perspectives. So let's find the perspective that allows you to look at it or yourself and find peace, yeah? And find that peace where you can finally go. Because then, right, the soul, the intuition, the higher self, the spirit can sing through us and we can allow it to control or take over the, the, the uh, controls of our imagination. And we can dream big, think big, we can imagine the ideal and then we can move in this world to make that fucking real. <laughs> Why the fuck else did we come here? To be a victim of the game? To, you know, just wave our fist and blame? No. Come here to create. When we allow the... Uh, the urge of the creative force of God to move through us freely. Ooh. It's miracles. It's divine. It's miraculous. It's, it's why we keep coming here. When you look into the world at the moment, like we're not creating from that place. I don't see it. I don't see it. Look at the architecture. Look at the buildings. Look at the roads. Look at the, the way in which we, we don't create from that place. We create from our conditioning and our programming. And we create from a place of fear and limitation and restriction. You know, the soul wants to sing and fly free like a bird. So it's us. It's us that need to do this work to find our peace, to let go and find that balance and that harmony. And when we come into that sort of conscious soul alignment, so I ask you this question to finish. What are you holding on to? Out of fear, out of resentment, out of hurt, out of hate. <laughs> what are you holding on to 
from the past that's in blocking your ability to find peace now and harming your ability to dream big for tomorrow. I'm Luke Buck, Astro Awakening. Thank you for the 1,000 subs. 2,000's next. Let's get there quicker than four years, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> See you on the next video, video in a couple of days. Maybe a week. Probably when I get back to, to Queensland. Just have a bit of a rest now. Social media stuff's been hectic, busy, and uh, I'm still here with my kids. So let's give that a rest for now, but I'll definitely have a video out way before the solar eclipse um, over the next few days. Um, yeah. Uh, sit with that. See you soon. Peace out.